We have our way to take derivatives now. Del d dx i hat plus d dy j hat plus d dz k hat. And we applied it to a scalar field. Now let's apply it to a vector field, which I'll write just big V. And a vector field, we've dealt with many fields, uh, vector fields by now, electric fields and magnetic fields. If you're going to write one really general, you write it like this, Vx i hat plus Vy j hat plus Vz k hat. And these are not constants. Vx, Vy, Vz aren't constants. They're not even just functions of x, y, and z. They're any function. So Vx, Vy, Vz are some function of x, y, and z. They could be constants. They could be anything. The point is, these are really functions here, even though I'm calling them Vx, Vy, Vz. So we want to have our operator operate on, uh, on a, a vector field. So how is it going to do that? Well, we said they're not really multiplying. They're really operating on. But they operate on things in a way that looks like multiplication. So if this thing kind of looks like a vector, and this looks like a vector, how are you going to combine them? Well, one way is a dot product. So what we can write is del dotted with v. Okay, It looks kind of the same. v was an unfortunate choice. So that's a del, and this is a v with a vector sign on top of it. OK, if you do that, d dx operates on vx. So that's d vx dx. And d dy operates on vy, d vy dy. And d dz operates on vz. So that's your, your dot product. And again, keep in mind, these are functions. vx, vy, vz can be functions of x, y, or z. So if we do this, it's called, um, it gives you a scalar field, first of all. Dot products always make scalars, and these make scalar fields. So this is some function x, y, z, function x, y, z, function x, y, z. Add them together, it's a great big function of x, y, and z. It's a scalar field. And it's called the divergence is the name of this derivative. If you take vector field, take its dot product, or take a del dot with that vector field, and you get the divergence. Let's look at one and see why it's called divergence. Let's actually just make a field. V, let's call it x i hat plus y j hat. Okay. Now, I said you could have a function of x, y, and z here, and you can. It can be very complicated, but I'm actually going to draw this, so I would rather not uh, make it too complicated. Um, <clears throat> let's see. If I were to draw x and y axis like this, then at x equals 0, y equals 0, you'll have nothing, 0, 0. But if you start to move away, say you move away in x, you move to x equals 1, y equals 0 here, now you'd have a vector with a value of 1 pointing in the i hat direction, you know, kind of like that. And if you moved up 1 in y, it would just point up in y. And if you moved down 1 in y, it'd be negative. If you moved uh, down 1, negative 1 in x, it'd kind of look like that. And if you went to 1, 1, you would be what? You'd be kind of like that. And 1, 1 here would be like that, and like that, and like that. It kind of looks like the field around a point charge, but it is not. Okay, so the field around a point charge is spherical symmetry. This is actually sort of a, a Cartesian thing we're making. If you move out to 2 here, now it's twice as long, and this one would be twice as long, and this one would be uh, much longer. So this field kind of looks like the vectors are just exploding out of the origin, if I were to describe it kind of like that. And if you go further away, they get even bigger, like this. And if we kept doing these, but really we need to fill in all the Cartesian points if we wanted to completely draw it. Okay? So you get the idea. The field is blowing out of the board. Okay? So let's think, what is the divergence of this field? Well. Del dot v is d dx of x is 1. Right? Right. d dy of y is 1. I just took the derivative of y and I got 1. And we're not doing z. So the divergence of this field is 2. It has a divergence of 2. So the way to think of it is this is diverging is just to drop a, uh, a little cube on it, say, like this. A little three-dimensional cube. 
And just think about how much field is going in and how much field is coming out. So right here, you have small vectors going in, you have big vectors coming out. You get a positive number if you do the number coming out minus the number coming in. That's because the field has divergence there. Okay? If you put the box way out here, now anywhere you go, smaller fields are going in that are coming out. That's because the field has a constant divergence. Its divergence everywhere is two. If you go on an axis right here, a little bit of field goes in, a larger field comes out. Okay? The field is diverging. If you go right on the origin, you can go on the origin, all it is is field coming out, right? Because all the vectors are pointing out. So divergence, the property divergence is like creation of field. We could contrast it with a uniform field. So if I were to, uh, over here, just let me draw a uniform field equals one, now, I'll be more interesting. Two, i hat, okay, plus zero j, plus zero k, uh, i x. So I made just vectors like this. This is the generic uniform field that we've drawn many times in electricity and magnetism. Its divergence is what? Del dot v. Is zero. This thing has no divergence because the derivative of that with respect to x, that's just a constant two, zero, zero, zero. And if you draw these cubes, you see the uniform field, the amount of field going in equals the amount of field coming out. So also, it, there's no field created inside the cube. So that also matches the idea that the divergence is zero.